share some of their thoughts and views on their particular races. Uh, we have five candidates here tonight. We invited six. Um, we have the two candidates for Highland Township Supervisor. We have Rick Hamill. He's running as uh, a Republican. He's the incumbent. He's being challenged by Kevin Curtis, who uh, is running the Federal Party affiliation. Uh, we have Bob Hoffman, our uh, Oakland County Board of Commissioner District 2 representative. Uh, he's a Republican, uh, the incumbent. Um, he's running against Rhonda Carr, who uh, did not respond to um, our invitation to uh, participate in tonight. And then we have, uh, for the State House of Representatives, District 44, we have the incumbent, Jim Rundstedt, uh, running as a Republican, and he is challenged by Democrat Mark Levetti uh, of Davidsburg. So thank you everyone for coming. Um, the format for tonight um, is uh, basically a question and answer. Um, so some of the questions are going to be for all of the candidates. Um, anyone is invited to uh, submit questions. Uh, the only caveat that I that I give is that it has to be a question that both uh, the incumbent and the challenger can uh, respond to. Questions directed at an individual candidate will not be included in tonight's candidate form. Um, if anyone does want to uh, submit a question, I have some notepads over there at the desk in the front. Uh, just fill one out, bring it over here, and uh, we'll get to as many as we can. Uh, the forum will run about 90 minutes uh, tonight, and we'll get through as many questions as we can. Um, each candidate will have a maximum of three minutes to um, answer any individual question. Um, we have a timer right up here in the front, and she's going to hold up a two for two minutes remaining, a one for one minute remaining, and then in 15 seconds, she's going to hold up the stop, so that gives you 15 seconds to wrap up whatever you happen to be saying at that time. Any questions with that? So uh, with that, um, thank you again, everyone, for coming. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I'll have the candidates come up, and we're going to start um, simply with, with an introduction um, by each of the candidates, um, and just briefly, you know, why, why are you running uh, for, a, for the position, or why are you seeking re-election? Um, so, for this first question, we'll just start on the far end with Rick, and then we'll go to Kevin, Bob, Jim, and Mark. So, yeah, he said, come on up here, because we've got plenty of people. Um, and I'm also recording this, um, and we'll have something uh, online at hometownlife.com, and in Thursday's no for time. Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, I'm Rick Hamill, current Township Supervisor. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, I have to question myself sometimes, why am I doing this again? And uh, the reason I'm doing it is the same reason I did the first time. Something told me that I needed to be doing this job. And I've had, this past four years has been a tremendous experience for me. I was retired for six years, came out of retirement and went into the job of a lifetime. I mean, there's been great times, some bummer times, but most of it has been so interesting and so different from anything that I've ever done in my life. But it uses all of the skill sets that I've learned from day one. So uh, my college education in business uh, gets applied. Uh, my experience with mechanics and electronics and you name it, has, uh, I, I get to use them all. And uh, so the reason I'm doing this again is because I got a few things kind of rolling, I would say, um, and I want to finish up have an opportunity to take some, some uh, projects forward. So I really would appreciate it if uh, you know I can get your vote again. I think I've done a tremendous job. Uh, I know I have a lot of support in this. And I'm here for you, I'm not here for me. This is not for the money, this is for 
what it is I've been asked to do. So um, thank you very much. decided to run for this position because I've been wanting to get involved with this community for actually some time now. Our busy daily lives keep us from things that we seek out or think we may be interested in. I'm getting older now and the current occupation that I am in, this is the young man's game, and I'm done with that and I want to be a bigger part of my community. Um, I already I'm on a trustee's uh, board for my church. Um, I volunteer a lot in the community already, girls softball. Um, I help out with a lot of you know, other events. Friends need things done. Somebody needs their roof fixed. I'm there, I help them. Um, I've been around to a couple of the community events and a couple of um, meetings and things. And, I just think I have a different point of view on some things, and I think that I'm ready to represent a larger majority of the people of Highland. Um, I've gone around a lot door to door, spoke to a lot of people who have expressed a dissatisfaction to the course that some things are going in, and I think I'm the person that can be that voice for those people. Um, I have a big heart for people, especially older people, um, as I am a Sunday school teacher for adults or elderly people at our church mostly, actually. And um, it just, it, it's in my heart to listen and to care and to carry out the wishes of those people in this community. So I'm looking for everybody's support. Everybody that will vote for me, I would greatly appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to this endeavor. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bob Hoffman, your Oakland County Commissioner, and it's an absolute honor and privilege to serve you as County Commissioner. My district is actually the largest district represented by uh, a County Commissioner. Each one of us, there's 21 commissioners, we each represent 56,230 people. I have no idea how they came up with that number, but that's what we represent. In my district, I'm a resident, resident of Highland. I own Hoffman Farms on Rose Center Road. But my district is uh, Highland Road, Springfield, Holly, and Groveland. And the reason I love being county commissioner is because this is a job where you can actually help people. You know, we're fortunate to live in a great county, in a great township. It's managed well, it's run well, but you know, you still have to have somebody paying attention. And the biggest benefit I get out of this job is helping people. And those of you who know me know that I'm an absolute pit bull when it comes to property rights. And I will go anytime, anywhere to help somebody protect their property rights. And I appreciate your support and I look forward to serving you again. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, it's uh, just a, a great thing to see so many faces come out to uh, hear politics. And uh, I'm uh, just real uh, pleased to have the opportunity to be able to uh, serve you as the state representative for Highland, Springfield, Milford, White Lake, and part of Waterford. And I got started in uh, politics back in 2000 and eight, I, a little time before that, I was uh, complaining about politics to my dad, and I had an education degree with a minor in politics, and so I was, had an interest, was always talking about that. One day my dad said to me, uh, Jim, you talk, 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 but you don't do anything. And I drove home, and I was thinking, you know, he's right. Uh, if you don't get involved, you don't make a difference. All the, the hot areas are gonna make a difference, so I got, Involved, I ran for Oakland County Commissioner, won that race. I was commissioner for six uh, years. I got a lot done there. Uh, 
here at the um, state level, I think I have uh, accomplished a lot of the goals that I promised people I would achieve in office, and I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mark Benny. Uh, I've uh, lived in the District 44 my entire life, and my background is a uh, technical writer. I write books for the uh, machine and the automobile manufacturing industry. And uh, I've been an elder at my church and a Sunday school teacher for 30 years now. And the reason I have gotten into this race is because I believe that the state legislature has, has got the wrong priorities on a lot of things. It's shifted the tax burden on the people who are least able to take uh, to handle it. Uh, they've let us down when it comes to uh, funding education and fixing our roads. And we just need to change uh, the whole attitude of what's, uh, what's going on there in Lansing. So that what I want to try to do is that I can help make Michigan as good a place to grow up in for my grandchildren uh, as it was for me. Thank you. Next question, we'll just we'll start with the township candidates again, but we'll switch with Kevin and then Rick and then same thing with the state rep candidates. We'll switch for him in June. Um, now, if elected, what's going to be your top priority um, for the upcoming uh, term, you know, while you're in office? Um, how do you propose reaching that goal? And if necessary, convincing the opposition that this is a necessary project or um, what? So basically, what's your, what's your top priority and how, you, how are you going to address it? So, and Kevin, I'd like to start with you. So. Okay. My top priority is going to be to bring back respectability to the office, from what I understand. There's a lot of animosity that goes on amongst the board members, and there's a lot of it amongst the community. Um, through my few months that I've gone door to door and spoke to everybody, um, there seems to be a specific agenda for the downtown area. And I, I don't want to say that that's not important, because it is. Um, the history of it and everything, it, it should be taken care of, but it's not the paramount concern of Highland Township and its residents. Um, and I say that because I have the, probably over 80 to 90% of the people that I have spoke to <coughs> think that there's way too much emphasis on that, way too much attention is paid to that specific subject and that matter. And some of the other things in the township aren't being taken care of. Um, uh, the biggest other complaint I hear is in the building department. Um, a lot of people are unhappy with the way, how, how some people can get things done, some people can't. And, and I get that, that there's rules and regulations for that, but there does seem to be special favoritism going on in the, in the area. That is one of my priorities. Um, secondly, is to make sure that the budget stays under control and under budget if possible, as always. We don't ever want to overspend, but uh, those are my first two priorities. Um, I'm sure that my opponent thinks that those are addressed, but that's not the sentiments that I'm getting from the residents as I go around to all these venues that I've been to, to all of the neighborhoods, all the doors I've knocked on, and even some business owners. Don't think that those are our priorities. Thank you. Well, that's a pretty tough act to follow there. Um, all of the comments that Kevin made, I think, are the types of things that kind of indicate that there's some type of a word out there that's being spread that's a little bit on the negative side, not a little bit, but a lot. 
My priorities are to see that the community is built first. That means all of the people can come together in one form or another or in different uh, events, but have a common goal to have the community be rural in nature, maintain what I've heard over and over again. Um, as a designer by trade, one of the most important things is, is to find a spot to focus on so that you have a community-centered core that the rest of the community can then grow from. You cannot redesign, or redevelop, or do anything with everything at once. So you have to focus. I started to focus in 2006 through watching our Downtown Development Authority, which was sanctioned by our township government, and realizing that's the best avenue for revenue and the ability to be able to make things happen without adding taxes to individuals anywhere else in the township. So the most important thing to me is to see that we rejuvenate what was let go terrible way and uh, I think what you've seen is you've seen the streetscape got rid of the mud holes have been there since I was 11 years old. I'm going to be 64 so that I can tell you how many years that was there. And I think it's important that we start in that core and that we move ourselves out and I have not heard any negative words on any of the stuff I've done and I talked to thousands of people. So uh, it's a shame that Mr. Uh, Curtis feels that way, but uh, the other part is, is our budgets are balanced each year. We have a huge amount of money sitting there waiting to put to use that we've collected from taxpayers in the past that needs to be spent. If we're not going to spend it, give it back. So, on that note, um, two things we do with the budget, we do it right. Uh, each year I have cut and cut and cut. You can't cut anymore. But what we can do is build upon that and use the resources that we have to make this the greatest little town in Michigan. So, thank you. My uh, first priority would be in education. I come from a family of teachers. My mother was a teacher at uh, the Watford Township uh, School District for over 30 years. Uh, I've been uh, substitute teaching and I have been a trainer uh, in the auto plants. And uh, I truly believe that if we say that education is a high priority, that we need to act like it's a high priority. Right now, we, we, we the last year we cut nearly a billion dollars in the way from the public school system and we've given it to corporations that form the tax breaks, which has led to teachers trying to teach in overcrowded classrooms and dilapidated schools, and then we wonder why the test scores are so bad. If we're going to uh, bring our scores up, then we need to start putting money back into the school system, and not just K-12, but also the junior colleges. Open Community College has cut uh, nearly 50 programs here in the last uh, couple of years because they just don't have the funding for it, and that means that those students will have a harder time going on to finish at a four-year College, plus it will it will mean fewer students will be coming to OCC in the first place. And uh, you know that brings the whole level of, of education down. So that would be my first priority is to bring education back up to where it ought to be. Well, I'm uh, pleased that uh, this year and every year that Republicans have been in office. There's been an increase in education foundation grant. Uh, here on down, I got one of the bigger ones this year. Um, and we have paid down enormous unfunded liabilities that's uh, been taken out of the budget and put in to make sure the teachers' pensions are funded. But my uh, priorities are three. First is family. Uh, my wife and I were foster care parents. It's a real big issue for me. There's 14,000 kids waiting for parents. Um, the first bill I got through eliminated some uh, red tape that stopped for parents from being able to adopt foster care uh, children. Uh, the second issue I'm working on is anything to do with due process. This affects all of us. Um, surveillance, things like that. Just read an article just yesterday that there was a department where guys were checking their ex-girlfriends, boyfriends on this very um, uh, privacy intruding technology. I want to make sure that this that, that kind of thing stops. Uh, support our law enforcement, but there are some bad players. We just need some 
some guidelines. Lastly, energy choice. Huron Valley saves 250000 in uh, energy costs because they get the 10% choice. There's a bill to eliminate the 10% choice and create a 100% monopoly here in the state of Michigan. Uh, when we had free choice, we had the lowest cost energy in the Midwest, one of the lowest in the nation. When they got 90% monopoly, we went to the highest in the Midwest, one of the highest in the nation. They went to the last 10%, and that is going to be devastating. $9 million is going to cost our schools if they get away with that. So I hope that's something we pay attention to. Thank you. My priority as County Commissioner will be the same priority I had since the day I was elected in 2010. And that is, I represent my constituents first, I represent Oakland County second. And that leads me to an issue that's going to be on the ballot in November, and that's the rapid transit tax. I've received resolutions from almost every municipality in my district opposed to this tax. This is a tax for rapid transit for Detroit and the south end of Oakland County. It will not benefit the north end or, or my district at all. The millage rate in Highland Township to operate the township government is 0.6 mills. This tax is double that for 20 years and we will not receive any benefit from that. And I've talked to not only the elected officials about this, but a lot of the uh, residents in my district, they're opposed to it. And I've conveyed that message to uh, you know, other people at Oakland County also. Thank you. All right, well, Bob actually asked uh, or answered my next question before I even had a chance to ask it. Um, but my next question uh, deals with the with the Regional Transit Authority. Um, and voters will decide in, in um, the Oakland, Macomb, Wayne, Washington, and the city of Detroit whether or not they support the, the RTA proposal, which would add a 1.2 mil levy on property owners. Uh, my question is whether or not you support the passage of this request, and why or why not, and do you feel it's, it's beneficial to residents? I'm a believer in uh, trying to do as much transportation assistance as we can. As you know, I was involved uh, heavily with the uh, senior bus program. But this is a whole different thing. Um, 0.6 mills is a little under $400,000. That's what you pay in property taxes to Highland Township total for the operation of our, the part that I manage. So when you look at it and say, okay, if I'm going to pay 0.6 mills is $400,000, 1.2 mills, everybody's going to be paying through the nose. The closest point where we can get picked up in Oakland Airport, County Airport, and then in Wixom. How do you get there? So it, it's kind of a ludicrous thing. And the other part is, is I'm a believer that technology in some day is going to um, derail the rails. In other words, you've seen uh, the use of uh, self-driving cars, I think that technology will become a reality. There'll be no need for rails. We're gonna sink a ton of money into a rail that all the way goes to Ann Arbor, and we're gonna just modify it so we can get there faster. It doesn't service enough people to make it worthwhile. I hate to do something to people that really could use those rides, but you can't burden everybody with their problems. So I'm not in favor of that. I think it'd be a tremendous uh, amount of burden placed on uh, all the communities in the north end of Oakland County and even some of the other communities that are closer in. So that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm not as informed on that specific uh, transportation authority that is just mentioned, but as a taxpayer, it, it makes no sense to me that we would pay taxes for anything that we wouldn't benefit from at all. Uh, even if we benefited from it, that sounds like an enormous amount of money, and I think all of us probably already think we're paying more than enough taxes, so I, I would not support that either. Thank you. <laughs> Um, 
one other point I want to make is that now the Rand Rapid Transit Authority has never suggested for a minute that this thing will be profitable and pay for itself. They know better than to do that. But there's actually language in this thing that says they can't use your tax money to subsidize it for so many years. I mean, they're admitting it's not going to make any money. And I just think it's, uh, it, it will not benefit us. And I mean, if you're for it, vote for it. If you're not, go tell your neighbor too. <laughs> I also don't support it. I've heard from three of the communities I represent. The are 100% against it. And uh, I've talked to Oakland County, and uh, we have people on these authorities that sometimes can put a stop to the massive waste and corruption and spending that goes on, but they said it's a continuous, constant battle. Uh, they said with that water authority, every time they're there, there's other players that want special deals for their contractors, special cutouts, cutouts and set aside for people on these crony contracting. I think it will be bloated. I think that it was going to cost much more than they're anticipating, and I don't think we'll benefit, so I do not support it. system. We're the only major metropolitan area in the country that doesn't have one. And this would allow people to get back and forth to jobs that they would never be able to have without a reliable transportation system. So we're, we're taking away jobs from people who might otherwise get them. Uh, and it would be bringing business into southeastern Michigan. So you're not going to see uh, as many short-term benefits, uh, you know, immediate as you would want, but in the long term, it's going to be greatly uh, benefit uh, Southeastern Michigan. Thank you. All right, this next question is regarding fiscal management. Um, and a lot of times when, when candidates run for office, they you know, talk about how they want to cut um, wasteful spending and, uh, and you know, get rid of the, the, the pork. Um, my question for you guys is where specifically, you know, are there areas where you would like to add or decrease uh, tax dollars, whether on the township, county, or state level, um, in the budget? And then secondly, how important is building and or maintaining a health fund balance as part of that equation in how you spend tax dollars? Um, this time I'd like to start with, we'll start with Bob, and then we'll go to the um, state rep candidates and then the township candidates. I've always said that being a county commissioner is a fairly easy job from the standpoint of fiscal management. We have an incredible staff in Oakland County. They think outside the box. They're ahead of the curve on everything. Our budget now is balanced through 2019. We have a AAA bond rating even through the recession. And during the recession, everybody took a hit. Everybody from Brooks Patterson on down took a pay cut. I mean, I can't think of one particular thing in the budget uh, that, that I would look at and say it should be cut because there's waste. And I, I'm sure it's a big system and I'm sure there is some waste, but we are really blessed to have and live and work in Oakland County. And uh, they do a great job. Thank you. I would redirect money back into the education, the public school system. Uh, we have been terrible at, at restarting the, the public school system, and in, uh, can we expect them to possibly do their job correctly if we can't give them the, the uh, schools and the equipment that they need? So we can end this corporate welfare, giving tax breaks to companies that don't uh, create jobs, and put it back where we really need it into the education system. Thank you. Uh, the one area I think that we could look at making some 
taxes and corrections is one of the biggest budget items we have. And, and the, the state has done a lot of work to try to reduce the amount of cost, particular, uh, particularly of people who have violated laws that are not really even supposed to be laws that are languishing in prisons. We're trying to clean up some of that language. Um, where I think there needs to be some increases in DHHS. Uh, I have, uh, in my office, because I've put out on Facebook and all these other things, that I'm going to take up cases of, uh, uh, of overextended DHHS cases where there's sometimes abuse going on. And uh, I think we need some more, a lot more training in that area. Finally, uh, our universities have had a lot of discussion like coffee hours. I see some individuals here who have attended the coffee hours. And we were uh, real frustrated about the number of administrators in the universities. They're very, very um, high percentage uh, of the administrators. Also, maybe we could streamline some of the courses. Um, you know, I saw Wayne State University eliminated math what you're saying is going to be one of the critical components of finding a job, and they said that we're going to replace it with diversity training. So you, you don't get a critical core course math, but we have diversity training and you pay for it. So I think there needs to be some reforms there. Thank you. Fiscal spending. Um, I've ran a business uh, for almost 30 years now. I've been through a couple of recessions and I've learned how to operate on some pretty tight dollars. Um, I've had some people walk away from me and not take care of me and I've had to make up for those shortfalls. I've learned how to do that by being responsible with my spending, not buying things that I didn't need, even though I really maybe wanted them and they were pretty nice on the wish list. But I stood fast to getting ahead and back ahead of the game. And here I am today as a successful businessman for 28 years. Um, I believe that will carry on with me, not just for this job, but for the rest of my life. Um, the, the township residents deserve that. They entrust that to us, and it's our responsibility. Uh, there are some things um, that are being suggested that we spend some money on that I don't agree with, and I think most of us know what some of those things are, and I don't know that I need to go into some specific things, but there are two things in particular that we keep gravitating to, it seems like, these days that are on a wish list that I don't think that are a priority. One of them seems to be always need to have more money for more parks. Um, it's suggested that we need to have uh, another piece of property on Hickory Ridge Road. And that's just, we don't need more parks. We have parks that we need to, let's get some things going with those parks before we get more parks. Um, and the busing thing for the seniors, um, from what I understand, that budget is getting very large. Now that's an important issue, and it's actually a touchy issue with these, this, these residents here. Uh, but it's important, and those seniors, they, re, they look forward and they expect to have that busing there available to them. But it doesn't have to be that expensive. And I think that needs to be addressed in the fiscal spending. But we need to be responsible with our taxpayers' dollars, and that's the bottom line. Thank you. Well, I've, I have the advantage over Kevin that I've actually sat in a seat that has to do the budget. <clears throat> Kevin, it's, it's a hard thing to learn, and it's something that hits you in the face real hard when you first get there. The truth is, our previous administration did a darn good job of being really conservative. And I say darn good job because they put a bunch of money away. Now, sometimes that's not always the, the best thing to do to save taxpayers' dollars. You have to have some things that are there for later in, in life or when you have buildings that need to be repaired, capital improvements, so on and so forth. I've cut out 14% average every year that I've been in office on health care. 
Uh, we've even gone to the point where now the three in-house officials pretty much have little to no health care paid for. So uh, went from a spousal uh, payment to uh, the state cap. So if you want to look at what we've done in terms of our budget and stuff, we've cut it to the bone. And I'm going to address two key things. One, the bus. That bus is fully funded, and it's fully funded with no money out of this township's general fund. It was a big issue, and it was proven to be totally incorrect, and it's all with grant money, and it's all from taking the hard work and going after those monies to be able to afford it. Same thing with the parks. And I'm going to give you some money, some numbers here. Since I've been in office, I've been able to allow some people to go after some revenue in the form of grants. $127,800 in grants to buy that park on Hickory Ridge, to buy that piece of property, to tie it to a park that already pretty much self funds because it's got soccer club on it. That park will be funded by the baseball team. The other part, $670,000 we've been awarded for safe routes to schools. $381,000 for that bus. And yes, you have to have people to manage it. That's where that money goes. That's $1,178,000. On top of that, I have also personally, in a whole number of ways I don't have time to do right now, saved this township $486,833. I don't think you can take any of that out of the budget. That's from just straight, honest management. And it's taken the things on my shoulder and going out and making stuff happen without costing you a dime. So the budget's in great shape. I'm uh, looking forward to the next year, and I think we're going to have a, a great opportunity. We need parks. Government's the only thing that can keep open space. Ask your federal government. Um, state elected officials, uh, like those in the House of Representatives, have term limits, while township and county officials do not. Um, do you support term limits in the position you're seeking, and does that belief extend to any and all elected positions, um, specifically each of, you know, each of your levels? Uh, why or why not? I am adamantly opposed to term limits. I think that everything in life is experience, everything in life is personal relationships, and this might sound a little funny, but you know, of course the legislature has term limits, and by the time they figure out where the bathroom is, it's time to go. <laughs> but um, I'm just, I'm not in favor of term limits. I think it was a mistake for the state to do this, and I can say that because I have no other ambition other than being a county commissioner. And it's funny too, about every election cycle of the county, they'll say to some of the commissioners, do you want to move on to Lansing? And I'd say, yeah, I want to go to Lansing with, on a field trip with my son, but that's the only time I want to go to Lansing. But I just think it's a mistake to get rid of experience and the relationships we build, because what's happening in Lansing now, the place is being run by the bureaucrats and the lobbyists. And I don't think we're being served well. I'm also opposed to a part-time legislature because any, if any of you have ever had a problem with the state, any unit or uh, department in the state and you have to get resolved, sometimes you have to turn to your state representative or state senator. And, and I've had to do that a few times. And, and they really help because they can cut through the red tape. But if they're not there to answer the phone and you, know, you have inexperienced people there, you're not going to get represented properly. I, I just, I, I'm not in favor of that, and I think it was a mistake. Thank you. Uh, this question came up because of me. <laughs> I guarantee that. Um, I made a comment in a, in a, a newspaper uh, article where I felt that, that what I would call term limits. I thought that 12 years is a good and adequate time for an individual to give to their community in the form of our lower level of our government. The term limits they have at the state level 
too short. There is a fact that you just, it took four years for me to get the knowledge that I have of what I'm doing now to just uh, all of a sudden have to throw that out the door doesn't make sense. But I think when you have 12 years at a, at, a, at a job, and number one, I don't think these jobs at the local level should be lifetime jobs. I think that you need to be people who are committed to their community. I don't think it makes sense for a young person, to be honest with you, to try and take on a job that every four years you gotta go out and, and kick butt like Kevin's had to do here and I've had to do to get your job back. And so I don't think you get young people to, to do that very often. So it's a job that needs to be looked at from the, the respect of 12 years is enough. That's a personal opinion. I'm not calling to say, let's, let's write this into legislation locally, but I think it's just for common sense. <coughs> Do 12 and I'm, you know, that's it. Thank you. Myself, I would oppose term limits, I think, most of the times people have, probably have a, a little light that goes on in her head or a little you know, feeling that I've had enough, he or she might decide it's time to retire and let somebody else carry on. But on the other hand, if that person still has the fire and still has the want to drive to do the job and is capable of doing it, doing a great job, then the people will put them back in that place and they will speak. And that's, that's how we get in this position and I think that's what it should take to keep us in this position. Thank you. Well, this is a subject that I think uh, requires some balance. Uh, and there's literally been people in office in this country who uh, were in a wheelchair on oxygen with mental deficiencies and they could be elected until the day they die. Uh, that should not be in that office. On the flip side of that, uh, we have the, the state of Michigan, the, the shortest term limits in the nation. No other nation has a six year permanent term. We're the 10th biggest uh, country, you know, state in the country. We have an international border, a very complex economy. There's little rural uh, states with very few people that have much longer terms. So some, something but longer term, I think certainly makes sense. Um, I think around 10 to 12 years is pretty much standard where there's uh, term limits in. So we really, I mean, it's, it's difficult to pack all that knowledge in. And like Bob said, about the time you really start understanding it, you have to go. So, um, so I, I would favor some kind of term limits, just not as short as we currently have. Thank you. Yes, I'm also against term limits. I think you wouldn't go to anyone else, a doctor or a lawyer or whoever, and want someone who had a short term and no experience. If you would want someone with a longer uh, uh, experience, length of experience here. I think we did a horrible uh, disservice to the state when we uh, instituted term limits. And we actually have a, a form of term, term limits that works very well. It's called elections. <laughs> Now for this, the second question, for your next question, um, it's kind of a little bit different for the challengers simply because you don't have the, the um, experience in office. But for the incumbents, what has been your biggest achievement um, in the most recent term? Um, and for the challengers, what can you point to um, in your own life that shows that you are ready for a position, you know, specifically as the township supervisor or as the state representative? Um, and we'll start with Start with Bob again. Sorry, I'm going to pick on you a lot, Bob, because you don't have a challenge here. <laughs> um, and then we'll, we'll move on to the state rep and then the township. Could you repeat the question, please? Um, what is your biggest achievement um, in office um, so far this, this past term? I think the um, biggest achievement is actually being able to help people. And not only I think some of the biggest requests we get from people have to do with the roads. And although the County Board of Commissioners aren't in charge of the Road Commission, it's a totally separate entity, we do appoint the three Road Commissioners, but 
But those are the most calls we get. And I'll give you an example. And this is the part about experience and um, time in office. Davisburg Elementary School in Springfield Township. It's in my district. I got a call from the superintendent of Holly Schools and the principal. They had an issue that their parking lots is not big enough for the school and parents are pulling up on the side of the road. It's dangerous. And their thought was that there should be better signage out there along the road. It should be better marked so people would be a little more cautious, slow the traffic down a little bit. And so we went and had a meeting. The representative from the road commission came there and the principal and the school superintendent. We sat in this meeting and all the person from the road commission could say was, no, we can't do that, no, we can't do that. Well, she left the meeting and then the rest of us got up to leave and I said to the superintendent, they're gonna do that for us. And he said, were you just in the same meeting I was at? All the lady could do is say no. Well, because of the relationship I've built with people over the years, and it started way back, I was a township supervisor in Waterford back in the 80s. But I called some people I knew at the road commission and three weeks later they're out doing it. And that's why I like this job. Thank you. My uh, accomplishment, I'm proud of it, other than raising my children, has been uh, being an elder in my church for over 30 years. Uh, during that time, we handled everything from uh, coming up with a church budget, budget on limited funds and being able to take care of all the programs at the church, uh, ministering to people's needs, helping people who are going through divorce, going through uh, illness, who had lost a loved one. Uh, and making sure people got uh, all the, the spiritual help that they, uh, that they wanted, uh, that, that they needed. So uh, that's what I'm most proud of is, is my time as a part of my church. Thank you. I would say uh, three accomplishments for me when I was on the county commission for six years. I found out that this was in 09 that we were hiring uh, illegal workers for jobs all over the county. The golf courses, the airport, there was illegal workers with contracts all over the county. Uh, I got a bill called e verify in that made sure that only U.S. citizens can have those jobs. Thousands of jobs now are being done by U.S. citizens that were done by illegal workers. How we can be elected by citizens and then have contracts where illegal workers were getting the jobs was beyond the pale. Uh, since I've been in the House, uh, the first thing that I was able to get through was a bill to get rid of a fee if you went to adopt a foster care child. The fee was $100 and then it was $50 thereafter. You don't know if you were going to be able to, but you had to pay this. Now we spent millions and millions of dollars to get people to apply. And it's, when you apply to adopt a child that's a snack this big, then you have to pay to submit it. And a lot of those people are low-income people that couldn't afford that kind of uh, ongoing cost. So that fee was eliminated. The other one was asset forfeiture, and I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the uh, the way the law is written is the, the asset, uh, grandma's home and juniors in their son and pot, they can take grandma's home. Uh, literally, there was a uh, an art uh, fundraiser in Detroit where there was under kids, underage kids drinking, so they swept all these cars, high-end cars, Mercedes, Lexus, and they each had to pay $1,000 to get their car back because it was part of a criminal enterprise. Uh, that's the kind of thing that was going on all over the state and all over the country. It was one of my first requests that we get that fixed, and, and it got uh, fixed We passed the whole package of bills to correct that. So I'm very proud of those achievements. First and foremost, raising my kids to be responsible, self-motivated, responsible citizens in Highland Township for their whole entire life. I've ran my business for 28 years. Uh, started it out with just my paycheck and my little itty bitty pickup truck and made it to the business that it is today and taking over the Sunday school, uh, the adult Sunday school uh, at my church. 
I was asked, hey, Kevin, do you think you could just take this over temporarily until we find somebody to do this for us? I said, yeah, sure, I'm willing to do that, not a problem. Well, I think that was about seven years ago, but they're still looking, I think. I don't know. But um, finest moments of my life, and, in my life, and I think that all of those things have prepared me to be able to tackle the next step in my life and be just as successful as I have all of those. Thank you. Well, it's pretty hard to pick a single thing, but I, I think that if I were to categorize what have I accomplished or what's my biggest accomplishment, my biggest accomplishment is being able to have a community that's like we have. I spent a tremendous amount of time after work, night and day. My wife and I are both workaholics. I love this town and I'll do anything for it. And I do do anything for it. You've probably seen me drive my tractor plow on the sidewalks. Um, I think the biggest initial thing is the implementation of the streetscape. To have the comments of people made, who would ever walk on those sidewalks? There's people on them all the time, every day. And what that does is that's the start of building the essence of that rural character that we want to have here. And I'm very proud of that. And I think that the proudest part of it is, is there's things that we've done to make it work right. One of them is um, we purchased a, a piece of property early in the time where we did for $8,400 in the DDA district. We, gave, we sold it to the DDA. The DDA turned around in six weeks and got $71,000 to put into that streetscape. That's leveraging taxpayers' dollars to the nth degree. Um, we, we've uh, also, on that same note with the DDA, I know there's a lot of conversation with the DDA, is instead of bonding, we had $400,000 in cash, earning four tenths of a percent interest. Instead of bonding and losing $15,000 to, to um, people for the, do the bonds, the bonding agents, and so on and so forth, the township advanced the DDA that money. They're going to earn $43,000 in interest off of that because now instead of four tenths of a percent interest, it's two and a half percent. I can go on and on and on with things like that. So the conglomeration is I've devoted myself to looking at every aspect of this township and every revenue stream and maximizing them and leveraging them to their nth degree. And you can count on me to continue to do that. I am not a spender. I'm a maximizer. And another one is the $350,000 piece of property. Everybody looks at it as an expense. It's an asset transfer, liquid to fix. The money's still there, and I have five people ready to buy it at any point in time. So anybody who's got any bad sense about that, it's a great investment, and land has always been the best. So thank you very much. Glenn County Economic Development Group, 
Uh, Al Brooks Patterson is the, the uh, architect of that uh, program, and I have created some really awesome relationships with Oakland County through this. Um, the Open Main Street program, which also works with our, our little downtown to help uh, promote that, has opportunities for business owners, uh, free marketing, free accounting help. Uh, so there's a plethora of things that I've actually uh, put into, into action. And uh, I just need them four more years to, to amplify them so they can be rock solid to go on for the next individual that takes over my place. Thank you. Well, that, that sounds like a great program to inform people when they come in to want to start up businesses or, or maybe even add on to business and whatnot. I mean, I know when I started my business, uh, I asked a lot of questions that I didn't get answers from them either. And so along the way, there was a lot of life lessons that learned what not to do. And then, life becomes a little easier once you figure that out. So that's that's a great thing that you inform people. That's a good program. Um, I, in my mind, what comes to my mind is people who want to come here to open a business